Hey there, Nick Juthakis here. In this video, we're going to go over parsing command line arguments in Bash. We're going to go over how to set up required positional arguments, as well as required and optional command line flags with and without a value, basically what you see here. You can see I ran the script with a couple of positional arguments, and then interest over here has a value, and then there's also another optional flag that we can set with no value, which is cool. Now, I don't know if I'm cool or not, but if I do set it, then the script is gonna tell me I am, otherwise I'm not. So this will give you the fundamentals of how you can start writing your own shell scripts that will accept various forms of input. And by the way, the script is a little bit long, you know, uh, around 100 lines of code here, so I did code it up beforehand, just because going over all this on video line by line while typing it will take quite some time here, so I'm trying to respect both of our time here, uh, mainly yours. But in this case, yeah, let's uh, roll over this whole script and we're going to start breaking it apart and kind of seeing how it partially works. So you'll be able to walk away after this video being able to develop this type of script on your own. Uh, the very first thing that I'd like to do though, before I start parsing input here is to define basically the contract of the script. You know, there are inputs and there are outputs. So I like to have a little usage menu here, which is going to echo out all of the information here. And uh, you know, in this case, I have a demo script here. And if I call this uh, with the help menu, then it is going to print out the usage menu that we see here. You know, exit successfully, uh, no errors, etc. But we can see here dot slash demo. That is the name of the script. And you know, in a shell script, you can use dollar sign zero to get access to the name of the script here. And that's also going to you know provide the full path here if you called it with a path. So yeah, the usage of this script is you know it takes a name and a country, and, and these are the positional arguments. It also takes a required flag of interest, where the interest could be either you know a single interest if you have one, or it's going to be a comma separated list. Uh, we're not going to deal with parsing out those commas in this video, although I did make a video in the past on how you can split strings in Bash. You may want to check that one out. I'll leave a card for that if you do. And then after that, uh, we have an optional flag here, which is cool. Uh, that's denoted here with the square brackets. That's a pretty standard way just to say like, hey, by the way, you know, you could put this flag here if you want, but it's not required. And then in this case too, I put the brackets here because technically you can have just one interest instead of multiple. And then also, you know, the script supports being able to pass in different variants of these, of these flags, the short form as well as the long form. I've done videos about that one in the past. You may want to check that one out. And then the output over here, you know, just lets us know the name, the country, you know, the interest and cool, yes or no, true or false basically here. So when we go back to running the script over here, here, the normal way that we did before, then we can see the output that we get here when we apply, supplied in some values here for the name, the country, you know, interest and in being cool or not. And then we have the main function here and the main function is going to go over, uh, yeah, all the work here to make things work. And that's being called down here on the bottom with a dollar sign at. I think before we go any further in this video, we may make a... Uh, I don't know, sense to explain how that works just very briefly here. So if I do dollar sign at and I run the script, then it is going to give us a list of all the arguments passed into the script here. And also just to be super explicit here, I'll put in dollar sign zero just so we can see that at the same time. Um, we can see the name of the script here and then all of the arguments being passed in. So we have Nick, US, all the interests and cool and all this other stuff. This is going to be very important once we start looking at this loop here yeah, in a second here. But yeah, I just wanted to clear that up, that uh, dollar sign at a complete list of all the arguments being passed in. And this main function, I do, all I do here is set up a couple of different variables. These are the variables that, uh, you know, our script can do whatever. You know, in this case, a script, uh, if I go into the bottom here, we're really just echoing out the name, the country, and if it's cool or not. And we'll get into details about that in a bit. But yeah, you know, you may want to call external functions here if your script is a little bit bigger than just echoing something out. Uh, that's up to you. But yeah, we just set up things here and we'll go over what this position is in a second here or, you know, once we get a little bit later into this loop here. And then we also define our flag arm arguments too. So in this case, cool defaults to false. You know, it's an optional one, but since it's optional, we need to default to a reasonable reasonable value here, which is false in this case. And then interest, yeah, it's just uh, an, an empty unset variable. It's up to us to fill that out, or it's up to the user to fill that out when they actually call this. Because if you do call this incorrectly, where you do not put any value in there, uh, this is also going to be ambiguous. So let me just move the cool somewhere else. Uh, we can see this is going to exit with, uh, you know, in this case, dollar sign one here because, uh, or it exited one because, you know, you, the script is called incorrectly. Can you still see that? Yes, I think so. But in this case, yeah, it says interest must have a value and then it shows you how to actually call the script. Uh, we'll get to that how, that, how that works in a second though. But yeah, let's get into the main like aspect of how you can actually set these things up. And that's all starting with this while loop here. And this while loop is going to continue looping while we have arguments to parse. And, you know, we ec we echoed out dollar sign app before and we saw that was like all the different arguments here. And dollar sign uh, number here, well, let me actually just re-echo this, dollar sign uh, like this, and then we'll do dollar sign at. It's gonna give us the count of the number of arguments that we have. 
So let me go back to the working example here. We can see uh, we actually have five. So in this case, we have five. Why? Because Nick is one, US is two, interest is three, four is the values for interest, very important distinction there, and then five is cool. Uh, so we have a number of five total. So now that we have uh, a number here, you know, while five is greater than zero. So basically this loop is gonna continue running until it actually reaches zero, which kind of is foreshadowing that we are actually going to take this list of arguments and like reduce them in every single loop. So the first time it goes through, there's gonna be five arguments and there's gonna be four, then there's gonna be three or two or one, and then it's eventually gonna hit zero. And then we're gonna be like, okay, cool. The, the looping is done and you know, everything is set up and we're good. Uh, but yeah, that, that's generally how it works. So the first iteration of the loop is gonna go through and it is gonna go and check what is the value of the actual arguments uh, that was passed in. In this case, dollar sign one is going to give us Nick in this case in the first uh, argument. So let me go back to our little uh, cheat codes over here, which is not cheat codes, but I don't know. It's almost crazy how just like seeing how things work feels like it's a cheat code, right? So let's go into here and just run this and see what this looks like. So it's Nick, right? And if I do two, then that's actually going to be uh, US. And then, you know, three is gonna be the other one, four is gonna be the other one, etc. So yeah, okay, cool. So we are looping over uh, things and we're gonna evaluate the first argument being passed in. And what is it? Is it the help menu? Is it the interest? Is it cool? Is it none of those? Like, is it a positional argument? Well, we'll see. But uh, let's start with the most basic case here and just take a look here at the help menu of the script. So if I run this script using dash H, that is gonna show us the help menu with no exit code of, you know, it didn't fail, it's successful, just showing us how to work the script. And uh, we can also do dash dash help. And we can also do help without flags. And, you know, this is kind of just optimizing for developer happiness, or whoever is calling the script, right? It's really nice to support different multiple variants here. And that's really easy to do with a case statement or shell scripting, where you can just do, you know, the short form, the longhand. And then also in this case, it's not technically a flag. It's more of a positional argument in this case. But yeah, all three of these, what is it going to do? Well, when the case statement matches this, it is going to just run that usage function that we saw before over here, produce that as output, and exit zero because we're totally done. Like there's nothing else left to do. User wanted to see the help menu, user gets the help menu. Although I will take a, a mention here, if you do run this without the help menu, you do get an exit code of one here, which is saying that uh, things are failing. And that is failing because you can see here we have for our requires name. That is because near the bottom of the script here, uh, which I didn't show yet, there is very basic-ish validation going on to make sure you have a name and a country and an interest. And we'll get into all what this is um, when we get there, but I just want to let you know, like, yeah, that happens. So we are now going through the loop. Let's say it's not the help menu. Let's say it's, uh, you know, let's just pick something basic here where you have the two positional arguments and the interest here. And we're going through the loop, going through the loop, blah, 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 blah. We finally match on interest here right? Uh, you know, again, this could be short form as well. You know, I could do like this and it's going to also work. Uh, let's see that work. There we go. And yeah, it's going to take dollar sign two. So dollar sign two in the context of this loop is actually going to be the values that we passed in for the I flag. So for interest, what are they? Well, they're going to be stored here. And then we are just doing a little bit of checking here to make sure that we actually passed in a value to uh, the interest, because if we didn't, then it's going to be like, well, you know, must have a value. So in this case, we're just doing a little bit of a conditional here to do dash Z on interest, because this will check if it's empty. So if it's empty and that condition fires, then all of this is going to execute here, which is going to print out saying that we must have a value here, just using printf. You know, I use printf instead of echo, just because I have a couple of new lines here. I think it's a little bit cleaner using printf while when you want to, you know, start introducing multiple line breaks or something beyond just like a straight up echo. And then uh, we wanna make sure this gets printed to a standard error. And then also it is going to print out the usage menu, which we saw over here. And then finally, just going to exit the script with one. You know, we can choose to use a number that's not one, like eight or two or 28 or whatever you want. So basically something that's not zero. So the user knows that the script was incorrectly called because in this case it was incorrectly called. Uh, there was no value there for that. And then, well, then we shift to. So that starts to get uh, kind of interesting. So let's go back to a working example over here. And we'll just keep it down to here without the cool, just so it's a little bit less confusing. So shift two is actually going to pop the first two elements off that dollar sign at that we saw before. And that's our reducer of, you know, how we eventually get this count down to a lesser number. Because once we find a match here on the interest one, well, 
we need to shift it by two because the first, uh, well, shift also, by the way, works without putting in any arguments and it's going to do shift one. But in shift two, two case, we want to, you know, decrease the count by two or basically remove both the dash I flag or interest flag and its value. So that's why we're getting rid of uh, two there. So actually, maybe it will be a little bit easier to visualize that. So if we do something like echo, uh, let's see, dollar sign at, I know I could put squigglies here too. I know, because I've made videos about that too. Like should put squigglies in there. Uh, braces around your uh, variables here. So let's just say, yeah, we run it like this. I think that's going to give us enough information that we want. Yeah, okay, cool. So if we run this here, we can see that uh, it starts with, you know, Nick and US because these are positional arguments. Uh, and then, you know, then it's just US because Nick got removed. Then the US got removed. And then the dash I and programming also got removed here. That actually may be a little bit more clear if we do run this with cool, uh, because we can see eventually, like after this gets removed, uh, then it's just cool that's left. And then eventually there's nothing left. And then we're out, out of the loop. So that's basically how the, the shifting of this works. And yeah, for me, at least, I really had to visualize that, like seeing that to like really understand how it works. And then this is just, you know, moving on to the next uh, case statement here. So in this case, yep, the cool one, fortunately, this is even easier to explain because cool will just be true if you happen to set cool as the flag there. And when, then we just shift by one. We don't need to shift by two because cool has no value here. And uh, yeah, I know earlier I kind of mentioned that like, well, what happens if you do something like this? You know, this is sort of kind of interesting, right? You can run that and that's valid. Uh, in this case, we get Nick country and then the interests are cool. Well, what happened there? This is a little bit ambiguous, right? We, how do we tell that like cool isn't the value to I? Well, you can't, right? Like how? So you could just by calling it different, right? You can do something like that. And then I guess like technically, uh, well, I must have a value. Yeah, okay, then it actually makes sense. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't think there's a really like super clean way to handle that. That's more like a human error. Like you just need to call the arguments in the right order. I feel like you're gonna run into that problem with basically, you know, it's not like a limitation of how the shell is, you know, interpreting these things. Now you could be like, well, if you've got interests and, you know, they start with uh, dash, I don't know, C or cool or something, like maybe you don't accept it. I don't know, but if someone's like interest is that, like, I, I don't know, that's starting to get way beyond the, the scope of this video, but <laughs> yeah. So that handles all the different flags that we can actually pass in, right? Dash I or dash C or cool or whatever you want. Then we need to go to the match here where, well, it didn't match any of this. You know, it's not the help menu, it's not the interest, it's not cool, like maybe it's Nick, maybe it's US, you know, it's one of the positional arguments. So the dollar or the star over here, yeah, we've handled all of our flags, now it's on to the positional args, basically everything else. So earlier in the script, I did set position here to, uh, where did I set that? Yeah, to position zero, so that's the beginning of that. And then it's gonna run another case statement inside of here and be like, well, if it's position zero, then uh, yeah, set the name here to be uh, the first argument here, which is going to be either Nick or Joe or Jim or Alice or whatever your name happens to be. And then we're actually gonna set the position to something other than zero. Basically, we need to increment it uh, up by one here. And then we do shift. So again, like we're gonna be reading the name Nick out, just like we saw here, right? All these were here. Eventually, Nick is gonna be removed, then US is gonna be removed, then Cool is gonna be removed, and then, yeah, it just runs to the end here. Um, but that's basically how that works there. And then, you know, the country is, is very similar to uh, what we just saw here. Um, so again, just to be super clear, like, you can put these things in a different order in the sense that they can exist down here, like Nick and US, but you can't just mix and match, like you can't put US Nick. I mean, you can, but then the script is gonna think that your actual name is US and the country is Nick. Uh, I'm not a country, um, but yeah. So we need to increment those positions like that. And then eventually you can also call the script here too, like what, you know, incorrectly here, unknown argument, what, because yeah, in this case, our script only takes a name and a country, but you're trying to pass in multiple things to the script and it doesn't really know what to do with this argument. You know, this is really user specific up to you. Like, how do you want your script to handle that? In this case, I just wanted the unknown argument to be passed in to be real explicit on, you know, how you should be calling the script. And then it also it prints to standard error. And then we can see it also prints the uh, usage menu, menu to standard error. And then it exits one because yeah, the script is called, um, you know, in a way that's not acceptable based on my criteria here. So we have all of that set up there. And uh, eventually, you know, we reduce down to zero arguments left and all the position arguments are set up, all the flags are set up, and now it's time to start validating the things. So now we're like, well, you know, if the name is empty, then let's print out, you know, requires name. So I don't know if I demoed that, I don't think I did. But if I do this script where I did like when I did this, right, then it's gonna be requires name. And then, uh, you know, if we put in our name, 
then it's going to be like, well, requires country. And yeah, we're getting this output over here. Let me just remove that. So, you know, not distracting us there. Uh, so let me rerun this. There we go. Cool. Requires country. Done. And yeah, and yeah, these are all basically the duplicate logic here, just validating different fields, right? Requires a name, requires a country, requires the interest here. And then we print the usage menu. Everything's going to standard out and we exit one. Now, I do realize that this is like decently duplicated, right? You could probably make a function where, you know, you pass in the argument, maybe the message or maybe just the name of what it is that you're validating against and you can do that. But the reason I didn't do that for the sake of this script is, you know, this is like sort of decently basic. It's also like pretty readable and like, you know, you can make these messages different very easily. Usually though, you know, if you're going like really, really up there with, uh, you know, a professional enterprise grade script, like your validations are probably gonna be a little bit more complicated than just a little one liner like this. And like each argument might be able to be validated quite a bit differently. So where I'm going at with this one is like, yeah, you could extract this out to a function and if it works for you to do that, then do it. But oftentimes your validation rules are gonna be a little bit different depending on what types of arguments that you're dealing with. And, uh, but if we make it past all the validation here, yeah, now it's basically uh, whatever script that you wanted to do uh, you can actually do your logic here. So in this case, all this thing does is, you know, it echoes the name, echoes the country, echoes the interests. You know, we saw all that before. Can run it again. Why not? Uh, I'll run it this way, I guess. Okay, cool. Yep. So we got all four here. And then again, like if cool is true, then we echo it. And, you know, if cool isn't there, then uh, we're just not going to see that in the output because this didn't fire to true. Now, there is a funny little subtle thing here too. You might be wondering, like, do you really need to return zero out of that? And uh, the answer is yes, because if you run the script like this, we are actually going to get an exit code of uh, something not zero. So it's one. Why? Because this condition didn't fire. So that is going to make this if condition return one. So that's why I explicitly return zero here. And that was uh, a nice little subtle one. But yeah, that's basically how all of this works. I know it's kind of a lot to take in and I kind of did slam through that in like 15 minutes or whatever it is. But yeah, I mean, you know, you can go to the blog post, copy this, bring it into your own editor, play around with it and see how it works to get more details out if you'd like. But yeah, I mean, this is a pattern that's reasonable-ish. Like let me know in the comments below, like what are some optimizations you might do? Like how do you make your scripts a little bit different when you are accepting more than, you know, maybe just like one basic parameter or two? Because, you know, if you're not really taking in a couple of flags and a whole bunch of parameters, uh, you kind of don't need to do all of this while looping stuff, right? You can just read from dollar sign one, read from dollar sign two, and then just, you know, make sure that uh, those are called in order and you'll be fine. But in this case, yeah, I don't know, sometimes you do need to use a little bit more advanced parsing and this is basically what I would do. Now, if this starts to get really, really advanced, then uh, yeah, maybe it's time to maybe use Python with arg parse instead of uh, using shell scripting. But, you know, I feel like this can get you pretty far. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think about this type of video. Are you going to be using this in your shell scripts? And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.